Hi, my name is AJ. I'm Kyson. And this is our go-kart hammerhead. In this video, we're gonna detail how we made it, the whole design process, buying parts and everything. So maybe you can get some ideas on how to make your own go-kart. So first, let's start off with why we wanted to make a go-kart. Kyson, take it away. It all started right before last summer. And we brought up the idea as a joke, like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we made a go-kart for this summer? And then a couple days go by and AJ's like, so I was thinking we can go to Home Depot and get some wood to mock up our frame. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where it all started, right there. <laughs> so our goal for the go-kart was to keep it really simple, no suspension, no roll cage, nothing crazy like that, and keep it under or at and around the $1,000 price range. If we started going above $1,000 by a lot, it would have been more worth it to us to get a off-road oriented go-kart with suspension or a shifter cart where you can shift through gears and fancier fabricated parts. So our wood frame is really important to us. It's really where this whole idea started and we really hold it really close to our heart. That's a lot of sentimental value. Oh yeah, most definitely. We, we never want to see it go. So welcome to the Burn It Later pile. This is our original wood frame right here. This is where the axle cutouts were and you know, it's really in a better place now, I think. I think so too. So when designing your wood frame, if you'd like to do that first, it's really important to write all your ideas down on a piece of paper and start drawing it out yourself because it'll really get your, all your ideas down in one place and will get you the go-kart you are looking for. Yeah, and another important thing when designing your frame on paper is asking for other people's opinions if they have experience with building a go-kart or even something like a banshee. Right. So when prototyping the go-kart, we had some values that we wanted to keep. Uh, one of those being we wanted to keep the overall length under or at six feet so we could fit it in both of our vehicles. Another thing is protection for our tires. We have a front bumper on our go-kart, so if we crash and we, if nothing happens to our linkage for steering and it'll bounce us off and that's why they are angled on the quarters. Which, fun fact, that's actually where Hammerhead got its name is the fact that it does have a very unique shape in the front, almost like a Hammerhead truck. Yep. So after we designed our wooden frame and made everything we wanted on there, it was now time to start buying parts. Now this part of the video comes with a huge disclaimer. If you do not do enough research on which parts you get all together, they have a very high chance of not working together. And that's what happened to us. We had to modify or even get rid of a lot of the parts that we spent a lot of money on, which made us spend more money and delayed our final product of this. So the first part that we bought for the go-kart, can I see remember what it is? The engine. Good answer. So we chose the Predator 6.5 horsepower, 212 cc. Now, the reason why we chose this one, it was local. We got it at Harbor Freight, obviously, because uh, it is their line of motor. And uh, we chose this one because it was very popular in the karting community, especially for starting out. It's very simple, very reliable. Uh, depending on where you're at, where you're located, you might have other options like Briggs and Stratton's and Honda Clones and all these other ones. Uh, what else do they offer, Kyson? Harbor Freight also has different versions of this go-kart, which you might like more for your own go-kart if you decide to make one. We have the Hemi version, and they also have the more the kind of traditional-ish one that has a little bit less torque, as far as I know. Um, then they also have a carding specific one, which requires more fabrication on your own. So after buying our engine, we bought a rear axle and a seat from eBay, and we bought our steering kit from Amazon. After we got those parts, we put them on our wooden frame to see what our go-kart would start looking like, and that's when we came to the realization we might have to modify some of these parts. So the rear axle came with all of our braking systems, our piston, our caliper, and the brake rotor. It also came with things to mount the wheels and a sprocket and chain, which we ended up not using because our clutch used a different chain. Um, then for our steering. Yeah, our steering kit, we, it came with everything we really needed. Uh, we ended up modifying a few things, but it came with a steering wheel, came with a steering shaft, rack and pinion, some tie rods. It came with spindles, but that was one of the parts we didn't use. We ended up getting spindles from uh, BMI Carts and Parts. 
and use those instead. The spindles that came with it for like were for like a suspension go kart, and we didn't know that at the time. Uh, the tie rods are another thing we modified. They were really long because again they were for an ATV, so we ended up cutting them and welding them, and now they are at a shortened length. Another part we modified with the steering is our shaft here. We it was too short, so we cut it and we welded another piece of metal on to extend it. So after we got all these parts, we finally decided it was time to buy the metal and weld the frame. I've taken welding classes before. I have not. So I taught AJ, and some of these welds in the go-kart are AJ's first ever welds. And it shows. There's definitely some welds on here that don't look great, but we grinded some of them out. Uh, but it definitely is a fun experience, and I learned a lot from it, and I definitely am opening, uh, open to do it again. If you don't have a welder or access to a welder, then bolt-on frames are completely possible. It just takes a bit more work. One thing that's important to think about when designing your wood frame and also actually welding your metal frame is cross members. Cross members are kind of where your, the front of your steering gets mounted, where your steering wheel gets mounted, where your seat gets mounted, even where your engine gets mounted. Uh, something that's super important when thinking about your cross members is these are going to decide where all your parts are, your seat and your steering wheel. So we both sat on our wooden frame and our metal frame to make sure we got our steering wheel at the right height and our seat at the right distance so that everything works out and you feel comfortable when you come back. So one of the last purchases we made were wheels and tires all around. It is definitely an important purchase, so we did do a lot of research. There's a lot of things you got to keep track of when deciding what tires and wheels you get to make sure your tires match up with your rims and your rims match up with your mounts. You, our, our mounts were too big for our rims, so we had to cut the ends off and then re-drill holes in order to mount our rear wheels. All right, so there's a lot of smaller parts that you'll need to buy for your go-kart if you are making one yourself. Um, those things include your pedals, ours came with springs, uh, a seat slider, if you choose to do that, we included one because we are different heights, even though we don't really use the seat sliders. And then we needed to buy a clutch, which you can't see because it's behind the engine and our throttle cable to mount our pedal to our engine. So that's how we got here. Now the frame was all welded together. We have all the components on. We've since painted it, but there's a lot of things that we will we'll do differently if we have a really good car in the future. First, starting with steering. We chose a steering kit that we did pay a, a, like a little bit extra for because it came with the actual uh, rack and pinion and tie rods and all that, but we definitely would start with a kit, but make our own. I don't think we'd do rack and pinion again. It was nice, but we had to modify a lot to it to get it to this com to get it to this state. And the steering shaft we had to extend. We didn't use the spindles that came with it. We had to buy some later. Uh, which added to our total cost. So another thing that we wish we did differently is get a different rear axle. There's a lot of things that we had to change about it, mainly the mounts for the rear wheels. Like I said, we had to cut them and drill new holes, but also it came with a sprocket that we had to change out and get a new one. So we definitely look for a different rear axle that either has the parts we want or get cheaper parts that we want and piece them together ourselves. Another thing that we would change is actually the length of the go-kart. We put seat sliders on it, but we have we actually have the seat sliders all the way back to the furthest setting that it has, and we both use that. We thought that we would need the seat sliders to, uh, to make it so both of us could drive it comfortably, but we both find it comfortable to drive at this setting. Uh, the only thing that's nice is that uh, you sometimes like sometimes let your brothers drive it and they can slide it forward so they can reach the pedals better. But if we were doing another go-kart, I don't think it would be as long and we probably wouldn't have seat sliders. It wouldn't be worth it to add seat sliders. It just added to the cost. So one thing that's special about our go-kart and we would do differently if we were to make another one is we have one pedal, which is our gas pedal, and a brake lever. On our next go-kart, if we were to do one, it would be two pedals, one for gas, one for brake. The reason why we had to do it like this though is because our brake cable wasn't long enough to reach to where we wanted the pedal and we actually have a hole drilled out for where the pedal was originally going to be. 
but also we could have got a different brake cable, but the piston would have kind of interfered with our steering components up front. All in all, it was just easier to put the brake as a lever up by your side. It's just a little bit harder to drive because you can't keep two wheel hands on the steering wheel at all times. And that's it. This is Hammerhead. We love how it turned out. It took months to get to this point, but we hope that we gave you some inspiration to try making your own go-kart. And it was a lot of fun. Oh yeah, if you do, choose to make your own go-kart, let us know how it goes in the comment section below. And also, if you have any questions, please leave it down there too. If you guys enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. We'll definitely have some more videos on the way. Next up, we have a special upgrade that we teased in the video where we put this all back together. And I'm really excited. We've already started getting parts for it and it's, it's, it's really exciting. It's closer than you think. Oh yeah. All right, see you guys in the next video. Bye. Alright, so there's a lot of pedals. Alright, so there's a lot of pedals. What the heck? There is a lot of pedals. There it is. Alright, this is the one. This is the so that's how we got here. Now our go kart is fully assembled. The frame is all welded together. We've painted it since. But there's a lot of things that we would have done.